Hello class, this is Mrs. Ayodeji with today's video on 1.1 functions and function notation. As you're watching the video, please write down important vocabulary, formulas, equations, and examples. Feel free to pause, rewind, or replay the video as often as you need to get a clear understanding of what is occurring at the video. And at the end of watching the video, write a brief summary of what occurred in your notes and submit that summary as well as a top question via the online WISC. All right, let's begin. Today we're going to be talking about functions and function notation, but first let's get a clear understanding about what a function is. Um, from the definition in your textbook, it says a function is a rule that takes certain numbers as inputs and assigns to each input number exactly one output number. The output is a function of the input. Okay, and so we have what we put into a function or use in a function as the input and what we get out as the output. In this class, in this semester, we'll only be dealing with one input and with one output, but in future classes you may be dealing with multiple inputs and multiple outputs or vice versa. So a couple of things I want to point out. Basically, functions express dependence between quantities. And a function is a special relationship between quantities. So there are certain quantities that have relationships between each other, but those quantities are not, those relationships are not functions. Okay? And we'll talk about at the end of the video how you can identify a function from a just a relationship. And functions can be described using words, data in a table, points on a graph and formulas and you are expected to be skilled at being able to understand and also describe functions using any of these forms whether it be words, data in a table, points in a graph, or formulas. So let's take a look at an example of um, quantities and how they are depending on each other in this form of a function. So it's a, this is from the book, example one. It's a surprising biological fact that, that most crickets chirp at a rate that increases as the temperature increases. So crickets are these little animals and uh, they make noise and their noise is called chirping. And the more noise they make, not necessarily the loudest, but the uh, more number of chirps that they make is based off of the increase in temperature around them. And so a way to determine the temperature around this cricket is to measure the number of chirps. And so here we have uh, multiple representations of that relationship. Here we have a in table 1.1, a table to represent the relationship between the chirp rate and the temperature. And in figure 1.1, we have a graph that will represent that same relationship between the chirp rate and the temperature. And then we have a function that represents that same relationship between the chirp rate and, I mean, a formula that represents the rep a relationship between the chirp rate and the temperature. So all of these are examples of ways to describe the same special relationship which we have said is a function. Okay. The title of this book is called Mathematical Models and I think it's good for you to have an understanding about what a mathematical model is. By definition, when we use a function or a set of functions to describe an actual situation, those functions are referred to as the mathematical models. And even though we may not be doing a lot of mathematical modeling, when you get out and finish your education and go into careers, all types of careers use mathematical models. And we will be going in depth and showing some examples of that in future sections. So anywhere from business to government to chemistry to biology to physics, all of them use mathematical models, and by definition, those are functions that are used to describe those situations. Oh, and for example, the, the chirp rate, oh, going back over here, this is an example of a mathematical model that describes the situation 
between chirp rates of crickets and temperatures. Okay. Um, we are going to use a uh, function notation frequently. And so I want you to be familiar with what it is and what it means. So if I say that Q is a function of T, which means that Q depends on what T does, um, I can represent that as Q is equal to F of T, okay, which is what this verbal statement is saying. And basically that means when I put into the function Q, I mean, when I put into the function F, the input, which is T in this case, then I'm going to get the output, which is Q in this case. And it's important that you understand that relationship for all functions that we talk about, whether they're dealing with multiple uh, quantities or not, is that the input is the independent variable, represents the independent variable, and the output is represent, represents the dependent variable. And this notation is consistent for what we'll be using for this course and also for the rest of the courses. Now, I do want to mention that functions don't have to be defined by formulas, and here's an example with the monthly rainfall um, at the Ch Chicago O'Hare Airport. There is a relationship, a special relationship between the month and the amount of rainfall that occurs, but that relationship can't be defined exactly by a formula. It doesn't mean it's not a function, it just means that it cannot be, the relationship cannot be described by a formula. But as you can see here, we can describe it using a table, we can describe it using XY coordinates, and we can describe it um, in words by saying during the earlier months of the year, the rainfall is low. During the middle months of the year, from March to um, September, the rainfall increases or is high, um, or is high, and then the rainfall decreases. So I know some of you will be asking, when is a relationship not a function? Well, by definition, we've talked about a function is a relationship where each input only provides, is only relates one output, okay? If you have an input that can give you two different outputs, then that relationship between the is not a function. And we can determine this by a simple vertical line test if we have a graph of this relationship. So if we take a look over here, we have a, um, a graph of a relationship. And if we apply the vertical line test by dropping vertical lines down, and if there is no part of the graph that is intersected by a vertical line twice, then we can say that, yes, this passes the vertical line test, and this is a function. So this is a function. But over here, this has a vertical line and actually many more vertical lines that will pass through it and intersect the, uh, the graph more than one. And that means this is not a function. Okay, so that's the uh, gist of what we're going to talk about. Please do the practice problems and the exercises. Um, and I'll see you in class.